really quiet in here. Whoa, what happened to Vincent? <laughs> just going to remark on that. He had a hat on, but he took it off. Yeah. <laughs> I think Josh has got plenty of hair to share with you. Last time I saw a picture, even a bun. <laughs> All right, I, I was late, so I assumed you guys were already started. Um, our first agenda item was registry APIs. Mr. Corman. Oh, yeah, yes, me. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I just, um, yeah, I put this down a few weeks ago. Uh, let me just um, um, I've just made it, wrote a few random slides just because I felt like it um, the other week. Um, um, Is right. What can you see? Can you see something saying registry API issues? Yeah, we see a whole bunch of other stuff desktop. too. You see everything. Oh, stupid thing. <laughs> stupid thing. Oh, my God. I, oh, I, told you not I was just trying to share a window and it's like, oh. <laughs> Reg look, just share that one. Yes. That yeah, one. There you got it. Can you see that one now? I okay. get Yeah, I think you just said that we have um, I, I take offense to that. Uh, I don't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, these are specific ones, not all of them. There's some, uh, you know, this is just some ones I was, that came up the other day and I thought I'd like to talk about. So this came up really in the context of, um, there's, there's a not very good tooling for users to actually see what's in their registries. Um, and most people tend to look at GUIs and not CLI interfaces. And we really wanted to, at Docker, we tell you we really want to, um, well, this came up when we were trying to go through something we postponed about trying to encourage users to delete unused images. And we thought, well, we should have, we should ship a CLI command to help them uh, do this. Um, but one of the really things we actually want them to delete um, is images that are not tagged because uh, currently around 60% of images on Docker Hub are in fact invisible to users because we don't provide any way for them to see them through the UI or a CLI at all. And so it was like, well, we'd like you to delete these images that you don't know you have. And this seemed like a very uh, weird problem to have got ourselves in. Um, uh, most users don't really understand that pull by digest is a thing, I don't think. Um, and they don't think that this means, well, okay, that means if I, I can still pull images that are no longer tagged. Um, we're not, it's, I'm very unclear how users are using pull by digest. Um, Docker Swarm always did pull by digest and I think that Kubernetes in general does not, um, which, is a, a mistake of its own, um, uh, which is partly why people like immutable tags. Um, so this is all a bit inconvenient. And then there's this even weirder thing that I don't think I really knew about until a few months ago, um, which, and I don't know how widespread this is amongst other registries either, but on Docker Hub, if you mutate a tag, we basically give a ref count to attach that tag listing all the um, all the images that were once tagged as that tag. And then we only delete them when you delete that tag. So if you um, label something latest and then you label something else latest and something else latest, we keep a list of all things that used to be latest and we only delete them when you delete the latest tag. Then we delete all the things that used to be tagged as that. How does that overlap? Which is a sort of branch semantics. No, so how does that re overlap Sorry? with the previous statement where if 60% are, are untagged di images that are just digest, is that because they once were tagged or you're saying that some just- Yes, because we, if you push something that's never tagged, we will garbage collect it. Um, so, and, or if you, um, 
Well, actually, that's we don't let people delete a tag without deleting the content. So, in fact, there's it's very difficult to actually. The only way you can have an untagged image is for it once to have been tagged on Docker Hub. Really, I mean, we do technically now allow you to push untagged images, but hardly anyone knows that. So I think it's extraordinarily rare. So the idea is you want to be able to delete, the people want to be able to delete things that are no longer tagged, the untagged digest scenario. Um, but if I do delete a tag, it deletes the history as well. Well, we've never exposed this history. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, that's the only way we delete things is when you basically delete a tag that that then deletes all the things that were tagged as that, which is really strange. And no one knows about this at all. We have no plans to expose this to users, even though it's a kind of, it's a kind of um, uh, potentially interesting to know what something was once tagged as, but I don't think that we want to guarantee we'll keep this, this semantics forever because it's weird. Um, I kind of like having, but I think have like a word doc history. Like I mean, it's history. kind of yeah. Okay, I mean, I mean, we could expose it, but anyway, but it, but for pulled by hash to actually work, we have to have some way of not garbage collecting things. So I think that's why it was created. I haven't actually talked to, I guess, Steve -O, uh, was around then, and um, it's because we have to have some way of not deleting these things. Otherwise, as soon as you un as soon as it was not actually tagged anymore. It would be garbage collected anyway, unless you would just insist that everyone tags everything. Anyway, so we're going to release a temporary tool that doesn't address any of these issues properly, but um, will will we, we'll be a temporary tool. But for reasons like it only works for we've targeted it for Docker Hub because of API incompatibility and it's only temporary. We're not going to be releasing it as a Docker command. Initially, it's just going to be called Hub Tool, and but we would like to have a standardized cross-registry command included in Docker for doing these types of things. Um, but we don't want to do that, you know we don't want to do that while there's non-standardizations. Um, I just kind of wrote some notes thinking about what other kind of semantics we could do. I mean, I think that if you look at the registry spec, there's only a a defined operation for listing tags. There's no operation for listing uh, untagged images at all specified. But I mean, should we just list, you know, should, should we just say that all operations should, basically we shouldn't treat tags specially and like hashes are like tags, but just not ones that you gave it, which is a bit weird semantically in terms of the registry. Um, but then like everyone can see things and it's straightforward. Should we just delete everything that's not tagged? Brutal, but um, much simpler to understand. And then users should just tag everything if they want to keep it. If you want to keep the old versions of Debian, do what a lot of people do, which is give them a, you know, give them a, lots of people now use Git hashes for their tags by default for everything they push. So everything's always tagged. And so this actually would work for those people, but it wouldn't work for, um, other th other use cases, like we don't have a version for every version of the Debian official image that's ever pushed, for example, because Debian doesn't really have a version for them. We'd have to make up a version and it would be confusing. And there would be a very large number of official images which would, for Debian, say, which would be very confusing. Uh, alternatively, we could expose this past history as a thing, but we wouldn't like to do that unless it other people are doing that because we don't want to have a different semantic model on Docker Hub from whatever else in the world uses. And that's all the ideas I could think of. So I'm really interested in feedback on this because it's just a problem that we really just haven't addressed in five years, really. Um, and I'm sure it affects other people too. For what it's worth, past history of tags is has been on my personal Docker Hub wish list for like seven years. So it's interesting that that information has been available this whole time. And Tienan <laughs> never knew it. But no one knew it I found this hard to it's believe it. Hold on. <laughs> but Tienan of all people, like, <laughs> even if nobody had told you, I figured like you'd have found that out. We get that asked a lot too, because basically- there's, th there's no API that shows it. I don't, it's, it's somewhere in a database. I've never it's found that to matter with Tienan. <laughs> 
so Justin and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, and it's like, this is a great conversation for us to talk about. I totally support Docker getting something out because there is no standard and we know how fast we get our standards done. Um, so obviously ship something out, get some feedback as an experiment, but I, we get asked of this all the time in ACR, like, hey, I wanna roll back my image to the previous digest because I have a problem. What was the old one? I don't know. Um, there's, and then how do I manage, how does a customer manage deletes? And each of us as registries have various delete semantics that we're trying to support. But to your point, there's no client tool because none of us have a consistent API. It's usually surfaced in our proprietary CLIs. So I'd love for you, us to- You actually do have a, a API for listing things that are not tagged unlike yeah. us, which is a starting point. <laughs> But it's but it's under the AZ CLI. It's not a you know it's not an ACR CLI. It's an well it's an AZ ACR CLI. So yeah. the, there's a couple of those things that we all force our customers to have to uniquely deal with each one of our clouds uh, or registries. So I, I thought it was just a good topic to bring up for us to like tease the problem, and I'd love to get a working group together that we can actually maybe come to an agreement on what some of these listing APIs are and and how to do delete APIs. Delete management, well, I'm sure will be a cloud specific feature that we'll each want to do or registry specific feature, but at least the API should be there. Um, so well, I, 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 I would like the user's mental model to be the same. That's what I mean, that's kind of disturbs me that you, I don't want to have to have a different mental model of what how garbage collection works to use a different registry. That seems really difficult to given that we want people to be able to use possible registries, but if they put the stuff in the other registry and then it gets deleted because <laughs> it doesn't conform to the things that are kept, that's, that's, not, that's not great if you're trying to mirror content between two registries, say. So I uh, personally favor referencing uh, images by their digest rather than their tags. I understand why the tags need to exist, but um, the digest is actually the unique identifier of the image. So I yeah not... sorry <laughs> yeah the delete all untagged image feels like it could break that need for a unique identifier for a container image. Um, but yeah, exposing the past history of the tags would be super useful. I mean, what we've basically seen until we get notary with signing working where they can assure it is what it is, then they do all kinds of interesting workarounds to uh, leverage the digests. And then without, um, uh, without digest, and then tag locking is the other problem. If without a way to lock a tag, they don't trust that a tag is not going to be immutable. And again, because those are not- part, 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 Yeah, part of the problem about people, about just asking people to work with digests is the tooling for working with digests is also quite bad. It's very difficult to find out what a digest is at the time you want to know what it is. Um, and part of that's Docker's fault. Like Docker, for example, won't give you a digest at all until you've pushed already pushed it to the registry with a tag, which is kind of unhelpful. The container D tooling is better from that point of view, but it's still there's no I don't know the majority of build clients won't give you a digest up front before you push. Um, even though that's now technically more possible. Um, and a lot of people have trouble building workflows that um, that use digest because of this kind of issue, I find. So that people tend to um, people tend to end up using tags because they don't know what the digest is. Or they don't know, the, sorry, they don't, they, they may know eventually, they don't know the point at which they want to know it. It doesn't uh, so this long too. <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that, that's also unhelpful, it's true, but. I'm going to shamelessly plug turns a uh, lock feature here because what that does is um, if you're building a container image with the Docker file, uh, if you say turn lock 
that Docker file, you'll get the di you'll get the same Docker file, but with the the image digest in the from part. So, I mean, at least there is some is that, what, you what know, the, image you're using. No, the, the from side's easy. It's the is that I've got a Docker file. I build it in CI. How do I know what the digest of the thing I just built is? Yeah, that is. Um, yeah, you can only get that right now if you push an image and then pull it again. Yeah, which is totally, totally frustrating for users who want to use digests in a in a workflow because they don't know the digest at the right point. Uh, uh, I'll I'll just interrupt. So um, I I have a quick take on this slide. I think this is interesting because uh, it's listed in the right order. I think being able to list images <laughs> that aren't tagged is like the highest priority thing that I cannot believe is not on the registry yet. Um, I linked in the HackMD to issue number 22 on the distribution spec, which links to proposals in Docker distribution, which got closed in favor of the distribution spec. And then my proposal got bike shedded to death. Um, the second thing that I think is important, but not nearly as important as listing untagged images would be deciding on some deletion semantics. Um, we certainly won't ever delete all untagged things with GCR. Uh, having some way to like describe or standardize, maybe supply headers about this kind of thing would be interesting, but I, I, that's a whole other discussion. Um, then the third thing about like tag history, I would love that as like a new feature, but um, I don't know that it solves an immediate problem as much as the other two things. So just for the sake of time, because we do have a bunch on here, um, I mostly want to just just in the surface this because it, I think obviously with a lot of people here are passion. Um, make it aware they're doing some stuff. Again, love to get a working group um, to focus on what we could do. And uh, from there, unless there's some other really pressing thing, I'd love to just free up and move on to our packed agenda before we do the holidays. Thanks, Justin. Can you, it, that deck shared, did you put that in the notes? Yeah, I will, I'm just doing it now. Thank you. Uh, so Mark and Peter. I don't know if I was muted when I said that. Mark and Peter. So I think Peter's driving this. Is this related to PR 204 and 208? Yeah, I, I think this is several weeks ago. Peter, you're on. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry about that. Um, gonna have to refresh my memory. I think this is probably regarding the, the head request and the Docker Digest header. So I think what we decided on the head request that was that we're going to mention it in the spec. Technically, it's covered by the get request. Um, but because a lot of registries um, let you avoid rate limiting by doing a head request as opposed to getting the entire blob, um, it's worth mentioning in the spec. And then PR 208, the Cross repository mounting. Um, it's already in the tests and we've added it to the spec here. Um, I'm sorry, this is the test. Um, we just pushed uh, what we hope is the final update to this um, that addressed uh, John Johnson's latest comments. Um, we're allowing either a 201 or a 202. Um, if 201, then that means that either the blob was, or it means that the blob was found and cross repository mounting is enabled. In that case, it triggers a second test um, to make sure that the blob exists in the new namespace. Um, otherwise, it acts as a normal post request, which is used to start the upload session and should yield a valid session ID. 
Is that clear? Any questions? I think there was an open issue that uh, Derek mentioned 23 hours ago on the on the issue. Uh, he said that he's a negative one in defining a new OCI content digest header. And I think that has to do with the normal, the, the, the current way of uh, addressing this is a Docker content digest header. And I think that in this uh, issue in PR, we were wondering whether we needed to define a forward looking OCI content digest header as well. And uh, Derek was of the opinion that uh, it wasn't necessary for, for the, the 1.0 spec to be that forward looking, but to better document what was existing. I don't know if anyone else has a comment on that. Yeah, yeah the consensus that seemed to emerge when we talked about it last was that um, in order to avoid uh, breakages with the 1.0 release of the spec, that sticking with the Docker content digest header um, was was the best option. Um, I'm hoping to hearing alternative viewpoints. I don't think everyone was at that meeting, but uh, it, it seemed pretty convincing at the time. Are there any strong dissenting opinions? I think it's worth noting that that PR is out of sync with that decision though. So I think we need to make an update on that. It's still referencing the OCI digest header that isn't real. No, I haven't, I haven't reviewed it since we chatted about it. I think it kind of came down to the, it kind of just came down to, hey, we're trying to remove Docker for the sake of re removing Docker from this stuff. But uh, I think John brought up a point. It's like all the clients are just using that header. So why, why break everyone just for the sake of getting a, company name out of a header. Yeah, Un unless there's a legal reason that we have to remove that, I don't see why we would because it just creates a lot of work for everyone. Right. Yeah, my, my only point was, did we want to have a secondary header that was the same but named OCI to be more forward looking at the same time for potential deprecation in the future? So you kind of like do a bridge, people that are using it now will, will work for now, but in future versions, OCI becomes the must and Docker becomes the deprecated. Is that what you're trying to suggest? Yeah, that, that's what I was suggesting, just from an OCI point of view. I don't know that it'd be necessary. Okay. I think some of the stuff we've tried to do some cleanliness and cleanliness for the sake of cleanliness and at the risk of breaking people. Like this is not stuff that's surfaced on the outside too heavily. It's by the time you're looking at this, you're deep in the sausage factory and it's mostly the people on this call that see it, nobody else. <laughs> okay, cool. So I think, I think the work item is for Peter to clean up the, to remove the OCI content digest uh, portion of it, then we should be good to go. Sure. All right, so we're good on that one. If we are, the next one was the sec comp notify. Yes, sure, that's me. So hello, everybody. I'm Mauricio. I'm talking on behalf of my colleagues, Alban and Rodrigo. So. They are in Germany, so this meeting was too late for them, so I'm picking up their work, their work here. So the 
the, the idea here is to give you an update of the work we have been doing with the adding support for second notify on the runtime spec and, and run C. So we presented the pro this proposal um, some months ago here at, at this meeting, and we started working on that. We, we opened a, an initial PR for doing that. So the idea was to use an, a, a hook to pass the file descriptor from run C to the agent. So there was like an intermediate hook that, that takes that file descriptor and passes that file descriptor to the agent. And yeah, later on, after some reviews, we discovered that it was not the ideal solution. We found some problems with that idea. And we switched back to the idea of, of passing the file descriptor directly using a Unis domain socket. So basically we have run C, we have the second agent and we pass the file descriptor using this mechanism. So we opened the PR. This is similar to a very old PR that was opened in March, the PR 1000 on the runtime spec repo. The changes we have done here is that we are adding support for my data, my data data. So basically we are passing also information about the container, information about the process that is running. This is useful because the second notify agent should be able to understand what is the container, what is the process that is performing a syscall. So that's the idea of passing also this information there. So the main difference between our PR and the old PR is that we are adding the support for having this extra information about what is the process that is performing this call. Additionally to that, we also, we also did implementation in run C using this, this proposal. And so far we haven't found any problems. So we are using that and we have, yes, we have performed multiple tests and this is working fine. So what we will, I, will, I would like to do is to get some reviews on that. So the idea is to see if there are any blockers, and if there are any, any opinions on how we can move that forward to get that merge in, in, in the spec. So I think- Yes, unfortunately- I see... This one closer, like this is the one I was watching that close. Yes, I see that the people interested in this probably not present on this meeting. It was Giuseppe and Akihiro. Oh, they are not here, unfortunately. So, yeah, I don't know if there is anybody else interested in, on that topic, and, or that is following that topic. Uh, I'm I'm kind of interested, but I, I I I do have this kind of weird question about who, like, who who the specs for now, like this. This detail of sending of the fact that you want to intercept some system calls seems to me like it should be part of the runtime and not part of something like another layer that's not actually very well defined. Um, and like, why can't you, why can't you just make a runtime that does this without having it in the spec? I mean, I guess the answer is you want to reuse Run C, but. Like, so can't we just make run C more useful as a library? There's a couple of problems in just using run C. Uh, I think the biggest one is you want the manager to be um, a centralized. There are use cases where you want the manager to be a centralized process that lives in a different namespace and has different security properties than run C. I realize that you could just use run C as a library and implement this yourself. But I think that for the mass majority of use cases, if you look at like how LXC has handled this, they've used an external server, an external handler that lives in a different namespace. Uh, so they, they do the same thing of passing the, uh, the listener FD across the, uh, the namespaces. Right. Okay. I mean that. Yeah, that make that kind of makes sense. If that's if it's going to be architected like that, it's just like the whole the whole kind of set comp spec, as I said in my KubeCon talk, is basically just horrible in every possible way. 
like the whole idea of just serializing setcom badly to JSON so that we can do these things is just like a terrible design. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it doesn't make it any worse. <laughs> it just continues to pile on shit into a design that we're going to have to fix one day because the whole thing is just horribly layered. Like we're expecting people at users in Kubernetes to feed things that feed into run C that now has bits of spec that are designed for implementations of safe of run times. I mean, it's just like there's total layering issues everywhere in the spec. But we're obviously not going to fix that now. It's just going to get worse. Roll with what's working, I guess. Well, I mean, it's not it's not actually working for users. It's might because be working. I mean, it's, it, because it's well, cause, complicated. Because, you mean? Well, because no one can no one can use it. Like literally, no one can use it. Like people don't understand how you use it. It's not widely, like it's not usable in any meaningful sense. There's no idea about like whose security responsibility anything is. Like it's like the, like the whole thing just kind of is just a, a historic mess that, we're, that is all, sorry, it's all Docker's fault for just designing like this in the first place, but it's, <laughs> it's garbage. <laughs> It's not helping anyone. It's like you can use it. You can make things. You can make things with it, but it's not pleasant. So, but I, we are not going to fix it like here because it's say this, this. because it, it needs a big picture for you to fix it. And th this is the OCI spec is not a big picture. It's a little. It's a part. So I, I could imagine it being in other, other run times besides just run C though, um, and handed around. And so to have some consistency around that is part of it also. Um, yeah, other, other run C maintainers. Tiananmen, I think you're on that list also. I'm on the runtime spec. I'm not on run C. Oh. I would I would love to get some run C maintainer opinions on this. That's how we send out the invite for a bunch of people. Okay. But we do have the recording so people can That's true. view it and maybe kick up a conversation and we could follow up in January when people have a chance to review it and hopefully get some mm -hmm. feedback going. Yes, maybe we can try to keep the conversation going on, on the GitHub issue and also on the mailing list about this specific topic. Okay, so when we do that as an action, I'm just uh, when we get the recording, you can maybe post it if you if you want to post a recording with a timestamp at this conversation to the maintainers of it, and hopefully kick up a conversation there. And if we need to bring it back for it on the uh, agenda, that would be perfect. Thank you. Uh, Peng Tao and Li Bao, Li Bao, if I got that right. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Hello. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, okay, looks like we're good. Uh, host, okay. So, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Bo and i um, working at Alibaba Cloud. And uh, so here uh, we're going to give a brief introduction about our project called uh, Dragonfly Image uh, Service. Um, so back to join this year, uh, we have discussed a lot uh, for a long time about the OCI V2 proposal, and we have several ideas uh, outcome. And um, um, so our project, uh, so at first the, the issue with OCI V1 image spec uh, is slowness uh, in our product production uh, case, um, because um, every start every container starter will involve um, downloading and unpacking images, especially when the image is quite large, 
the, the time is, the latency is quite large. And uh, lazy, for that, lazy fetch is a common idea. And uh, last year we came up with this project. We named it as NIDAS and now is merged as the P2P solution Dragonfly uh, as its um, uh, one of its components image service. And uh, uh, so uh, the most important design about our project is to split the container image into two parts, uh, metadata and data. Um, and uh, um, and uh, for a single container start, we can only download the metadata because uh, that's the only thing a container, that's, that's the only thing container needs to start with. And data can be left on the register or other storage where we can fetch it on demand. Um, so uh, NIDAS cons consists of two parts. Uh, first one is a user space file system called RAFS. Uh, another is an, uh, oh, okay, this user space will handling, will handle, handle the metadata and the data. Um, and another thing is about the uh, image manifest, which is an extra image manifest, uh, uh, taking advantage of um, current image specs platform feature. And uh, so uh, with this feature, we can make this NIDAS project um, compatible with the current image spec. And uh, Okay, so this is about NIDAS. Um, so we keep all the metadata here, uh, namely files and directories into uh, a file called Bootstrap, when, uh, which is a metadata. And uh, the other data, uh, file data uh, has been split into uh, chunks with the size being one megabyte. Uh, but the size can be configured uh, right now, we just fix it at uh, one megabyte. Uh, for the bootstrap, uh, the whole metadata tree is a Merkle tree, uh, so we can do the integration check very easily. Um, and uh, and uh, because the data has been split into trunks, so that the duplication can be done in trunks instead of the current layers, which is more efficient. Um, okay, so. Uh, okay, thanks to this, uh, such a design, a uh, lot of ideas in our brainstorm. Uh, okay, where it is, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, here it is, yes. So uh, the proposal brainstorm ideas has been covered in our project. Uh, for example, the data application uh, has been done uh, because we have using trunks, which is more efficient. Sharing. Sorry. It's not sharing? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, how about now? Good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, oh, basically, I want to um, go over this brainstorm ideas to see which one we have covered and which one are uh, not yet. Uh, the duplication and this canonical representation. Uh, and the third one, this uh, explicit uh, metadata. We have done because of our metadata uh, user space file system, and uh, uh, we have removed all the unnecessary metadata like time step and uh, device node something, um, and uh, uh, and the most important about the lazy fetch support uh, here um, because we only need to download the Bootstrap, which is metadata, to start a container. So the start time of container. Would be extremely faster than than than, than before, and uh, from um, the security point of view, uh, here we have some requirement like a, a bales of materials, and because we have uh, right now we have a separate metadata file, we can do static check on this metadata file to 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 uh, determine whether there is a fault or facts um, in, in in this image. And um, and uh, the how to verify the image. Uh, so he, this is a good point because right now with OCV1, uh, we can only verify the image integrity before the um, before the image is compact. Uh, after that, uh, if the file has been on the local file system, there is no way to check it in the runtime. Uh, so with our NIDAS. Uh, 
uh, we will do the validation about the integrity in the runtime uh, on both metadata and data. Um, and um, and uh, okay. And the, the other two is also about the dedupe. Um, uh, oh, I forgot one thing. So our solution is like a CRFS, it's a fuse solution. So we develop our uh, user space file system on top of fuse. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, and besides that, uh, we have uh, three more features here. Uh, we can do prefetch, uh, which is which can be uh, very important if if the network is not um, is not stable. Um, and uh, once the container is started, uh, we will start a background uh, threads to do prefetch, so that if if all the mm, all the blob, I mean, if the, all the data has been downloaded into uh, local uh, storage, then we don't need any network anymore, just like current OCI v1. And the blob cache is, uh, is kind of a, um, a cache on, on the local storage so that multiple images can share their chunks um, in the local storage. And the, the last one is about compression. So we compress our data, our file data uh, with um, currently two algorithm, one of the two algorithm, the default one is LZ4 um, so that we can get a storage efficient um, in both uploading uh, transfer and uh, local storage and the registry storage. Um, so in conclusion, so um, we would like to uh, have this NIDAS project as a um, possible reference implementation for OCI v2 proposal. Um, so any thoughts and uh, um, recommendation or, or, or any suggestions are welcome. Thank you. And uh, oh, oh, uh, by the way, our project has been uh, on the GitHub for uh, a couple of weeks. And if you are looking for any code and uh, you can just go to the GitHub. I have attached a link in the, our notes. Cool, thanks. Did, has there been any side discussions going on in the OCI v2? And we should probably call it OCI v2 image spec. Yes. Um, I just I haven't seen much going on, but I, I, we, had the, we had a flurry of meetings. Uh, we had really good coverage of it. So I didn't know if there was some breakout conversations happening. No, um, I, I'm not aware of any. Um, I, I am curious about NIDAS. You, you, you talked about you can do online integrity verification. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about how that works? Is that like an IMA style thing or what exactly oh. do you do there? Sure. So, uh, so the bootstrap, uh, the metadata is a uh, Merkle tree. So parent has all the, um, all the hash values about its child, its children. And whenever uh, a child or parent is uh, got accessed, that hash will be compared. And for data, uh, we do uh, both compression and, uh, mm, uh, and what, and hash. Uh, right now we used uh, SHA-256. Uh, two, and uh, another thing is about, um, uh, uh, Blake, Blake three, uh, digest, and uh, because we have digest for every trunk, and that trunk, uh, oh sorry, the, the digest is also included in the metadata, which is covered in this um, in this document, because we don't have we have limited time, so I didn't cover it. Um, sure, but yeah, yeah. We do have, yeah, we do have digest for every trunk. So uh, whenever the trunk got accessed, uh, which means. Uh, when you do the uh, fetch on demand uh, and the, that trunk will be validated. But uh, I need to know that this validation needs, um, you know, uh, it's not free. Uh, it will impact our time. So it, right now it's configurable. Yeah. 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 Does it, does it check the children? Does it, if it recalculates, does it check not only the children that it expects to find, but anything that it didn't expect to find? Like, does it just walk like all the directory entries? 
Um, let me see. Um, I know, I'm sorry, let's get, get in the weeds. I, I'm, I, this, this topic excites, it is interesting to me. Yeah. Um, so my friend Peng Tao maybe can, uh, he, he can explain yeah. in more details. Um, for, for, non, um, for, for the metadata, the, we, we will continue, we only check for the, the chosen, not the further decisions right now. But uh, mm -hmm. um, we, 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 ha we, we have tools to validate an uh, entire bootstrap. And so if you want to verify an uh, entire bootstrap, then, then it's doable as well. And also the, the runtime run check is optional because the, it affects the um, CPU usage and uh, uh, runtime run, run overhead. Yeah, that, that was one of the challenges we looked at when messing with the BSD M tree approach to things. But um, we talked about getting into this kind of Merkle tree for the kind of passive validation of, yeah, yeah but it does have an impact, it's fun. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm keen to, uh, to, to put my hands on this. This is interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. I put a little doc here in our. Um, uh, it's not merged yet, but it will be in uh, this week. So if you are interested in this, you can go over this doc for more details. Uh, this will cover the main uh, structures and uh, some explanation and details and design, uh, especially about the disk format, um, how the bootstrap is laid out uh, on the on the file. Can we try it out? Of course, yeah, sure. Uh, so currently we have deployed in our production case uh, and you know, Alibaba has a double 11 event and it has passed that uh, validation and it has been used. So uh, actually before this project, we have serious problems when booting some big images like several gigabytes and it always time out and uh, the success rate is terrible. So with this um, right now is almost, uh, it, the, the rate has reached uh, almost 90, 99%, yeah. And uh, uh, so to use it, uh, right now you can use, um, we provide an image tool to convert the OCI, OCI uh, V1 image to uh, our NIDAS image format. And uh, if you are going to use with container D, we also have a, a snapshotter, a, a, a independent snapshotter. Um, and uh, you can just uh, use uh, container D or CRD something. Ah, so the snapshotter is different. I mean, it's container D's snapshotter, is it? Or do you have your own one? Uh, no, it's a separate snapshotter. Just like ah. uh, if you know CRFS and they, they have a, um, what's that? Uh, a, a star GZ snapshotter. Uh, similar, we have a NIDA snapshotter here. I see, okay. Yeah, uh, uh, all of the resources are available on our GitHub. So it, do you do this like on, on the registry side on push is when you convert or is it converted on the client? Uh, it depends. Uh, uh, I mentioned that there is a there is an extra manifest uh, we can do here, uh, taking advantage of uh, a platform feature. So if you have a um, with our uh, image converter tool, uh, we can generate such a manifest and push it into the registry, and uh, um, with uh, and uh, if we do that, uh, like uh, for a single tag uh, tagged image. We have actually two format. One is also have one original image, and the other one is the NIDAS image. And uh, if the uh, client on the client side, if the uh, two like container D, they support a NIDAS format, uh, which can recognize the uh, platform and OS feature, uh, it can uh, pull this NIDAS image directly. And uh, by the way, uh, uh, we also support StarGZ actually. Uh, the thing uh, that that has been done in our NIDAS snapshotter, basically we pull the st star GZ 
well, if the user uh, upload uh, start GZ uh, format into the registry, and uh, we uh, we will pull that start GZ and convert it locally to NIDAS and uh, use it as a NIDAS format. Very cool. And let me explain a little bit about star GZ. And the, the problem we see with star GZ is it, it has multiple layers. And, uh, and so, so for, for each layer, it will convert it into a fuse mount point. So if, a, uh, if an image has, multi, has many layers, there are many fuse, fuse pin banks and uh, it will affect uh, performance. So we, we kind of con consolidate all these Mm, start using layers into a single NetLess metadata layer. So the, in, if we run a um, start run a image with NetLess, there will there will be only one fuse layer. So uh, I think as we, we we think the, it will help performance. So we did the conversion and for compatibility, sure. Yeah, so the, the other point about the eff storage efficient, uh, I didn't mention before is that um, it's because we have consolidated all the layers into just one layer and there is no uh, intermediate layers or like those white out files and deleted files, they will just be deleted. They won't be downloaded again. And that's also contribute to the storage, uh, efficient storage. Uh, the, this is a problem that actually I was wondering about because uh, sometimes folks will delete metadata that they're not supposed to, well, metadata that may help, you know, um, bisect mm -hmm. or trace back to source or something like that. So okay. from, a com from a compliance perspective, well, you can delete the file as long as the metadata of you know what files were deleted mm -hmm. remain to be able to you know go back. I was actually going to ask a more high level question, which is: Have you thought about what type of metadata you were going to store here? Um, sure. Okay. Uh, so okay, where is the metadata? Okay, here. Uh, here is a uh, you know the inode. And which I believe it's a first, uh, files metadata. Uh, so we have um, most of the uh, local file system um, metadata like inode and uh, several IDs, uh, size and blocks. And uh, uh, we we do support hard link and slim link here, uh, symbolic link. And but we don't store the timestamp uh, or the, some special devices um, like chart devices here. Uh, so basically, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, um, so what's nice about this uh, to me is that the, the SHA will not change as you modify, um, well, uh, if you're using the snapshot, but it will be modified if, you know, some process chooses to uh, modify it. Is there any way that you can record information about what process touched what file? What process? So, but uh, are you asking for the access pattern? Is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we do have that because we have prefetch. I mentioned before, and uh, for uh, if you if you want to do prefetch more efficiently, uh, there are two ways actually. One way is uh, you know your image very well and you know your workload very well. You can, like a Node.js, you can use a static uh, analyze to uh, check uh, which file would be fetched first. And that's that's the one, one way. And the other way is about, about prefetch is uh, we can record, we can just, just start a container and, uh, and roll over the workloads. And uh, in between, uh, we record uh, which file would be um, accessed and in which order. And okay. uh, we can save that, uh, which is an access panel, of course, and we can save that file uh, into, into somewhere. And uh, later, they, 
and later for the same workload for the same uh, environment we can do we can fit that access pattern to our prefetch mechanism uh, which makes the on, on, on demand load more efficient okay yeah so one question i have is it sounds like you ha you you do this conversion sort of for runtime um, but like if you at build time, for example, you have, suppose you have an image in this format and you want to make a one byte change to a file, mm -hmm. how is that represented? Cause it sounds like you smooshed everything into one layer to work around, you know, having lots of fuse mounts. Mm -hmm. Um, is there a, is there a good way to do that at build time or is this mostly just a runtime thing? Okay. Uh, so if we just, uh, uh, move a few bytes uh, because our data has been split into chunks. So um, mostly there will be only one or two chunks which um, you know changed. And uh, right, but isn't that all part of the one same file that you've all you smushed together? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, but uh, okay. before, uh, yeah, yes. Um, uh, uh, but we do dedupe. Uh, in the unit of trunk. So before uploading, we will check whether the registry have that trunk already. But um, for currency registry mechanism, uh, uh, we will see two blob file, data file, I mean. Okay. So uh, ideally we will have a uh, dedupe algorithm based on trunks, not instead of layers. But uh, right now we can only do it uh, um, in locally, not on the registry uh, registry side. Okay. Yeah, we, we also support a so-called uh, parent layer when building a new in, new NetS image. So you, you, if you, um, so you, you, if your original image has two layers and uh, we, we will build it into NetS incrementally. So the, um, for, for the first layer, we will generate a bootstrap there. And uh, when we build the second layer, we will compare with the first gener first layer bootstrap and uh, use whatever the blobs, the checks are there. So that, okay. that's kind of the du duplication. And okay, and I and I, I suppose that only stores the small delta. It doesn't restore every the whole file if you just change yeah. one byte in it, yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. the chunk size is. Um, That's true. But so so then, if you have this this new Nidus image with two layers, then do you have to do the same smushing when you actually run it then into one file, or how does that work? Or do you end up with if you have yeah. this? Yeah new NIDIS image with two NIDIS layers. Do you have two mm. fuse mounts for that one? No, no, no. We when we, we only deduplicate the the data layer for, for the metadata layer. And you, you, even if we only delete one file, we will generate a, an entire bootstrap, an, an entire new bootstrap, and uh, then will be uploaded to registry and uh, downloaded when running. Yeah. So there, there's only one metadata layer for every image on the, on the registry. I see, okay, thanks. For the sake of uh, knowing who, who, who else on the call, who, who is the person on the phone? Oh, sorry, that's me, Tycho. Tycho, <laughs> I just oh, hey. call in because Zoom on Linux is terrible, so I just refused to use it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> sorry. We were all, I think there's a bunch of private messages going, who is that? <laughs> Try to figure out the seven two. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I just I always call in because it Zoom on Linux is terrible. Um, that's good stuff. We are past time, so I just want to yep. let people continue if they want. To yeah, yeah. Feel I'm up. I'm uh, done. Sorry, you can. No, no, it's a great conversation. I, obviously, this is something we care about as well. Um, so, so uh, I was wondering, what's the next plan? Should we uh, just start a discussion about this, or uh, should I open an issue for it? Uh, what is a next step should I do? I, I think this is the th kind of thing that we've been trying to figure out, like where, when is it something that is, uh, that, that's kind of why I ask if you're doing on the registry side or on the client, 
Um, this is something we've been, you know, looking at with the, the teleport project is, you know, where is the impact outside exactly. of the user flows? So I, that's why I was kind of curious about this, but I, I'm actually late to another call, so I don't mean to tease this up. Um, okay. Maybe we can do a part two next week. I don't know if you guys are in China and being very polite to the time zones or... Uh, uh, I'm in the U.S. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to put it on next week's calendar, I'll still be around next week and we can do a part two of what you think is, you see as the usability experience. Um, sure. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we, I, I can uh, introduce some production use case here, uh, yeah, which be might be more interesting. Yeah. I think the production use cases, I think we, we all kind of get it to just be faster and reliable. Um, mm -hmm. I think the question that, that struggles is, as with all of these that are end-to-end -end tooling with lots of different projects now, right? it's not just one company, Docker runs this one stack, it's Docker, it's ContainerD, it's cloud implementations, you know, it's, it's all these various toolings, it's registry implementations. What is the, how do you implement something like this and not cause everybody to do a reset or where are plugins supported? So I think thinking about what does that user flow look like um, kind of lends itself to whether there is something for us to do or it's, you know, out, you know, it's a, it's a cloud specific, like that's, okay. and that's, we can talk more about what, how we've been thinking about it with, in Azure. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. I, there was one more item, but I think the person recognized that it might not fit. So um, for the content negotiation, would be great for next week. And with that, um, we'll kick off till next week. Thanks, folks, and happy holidays.